Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over the water to Denmark once again and we've got another really quite interesting brewery to have a look at today. This is my first try of one of their beers but these guys are particularly interesting because they're a specialist Britannomyces brewery so they brew a lot of different sour beers. So today we're going to go to Copenhagen in Denmark and have a look at Rocket Brewing Company and we're tasting their Deja Vu and this one is a black farmhouse ale and I've tried a lot of farmhouse farmhouse ales and saisons and things like that before but never a black one so this should be really quite interesting and this beer was actually recommended to me by Morton at Ull Boutique and very nice beer shop Morton's a really nice guy knows his Danish beer and knows all of these other things but he said this beer was a really quite interesting one that for some reason worked not his favorite style of beer but he he said he really quite enjoyed this one so I'm quite looking forward to trying this as well actually because it is something a little bit different but anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you little bit about the brewery. If you do want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual websites are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my future reviews that I'll do from Rocket Brewing Company. As I said, first time I'm trying one of these beers, there's the link to Morton's shop down there. Do go and check them out if you're in Copenhagen. And there's all the usual social media things, the Facebook, the Twitter, and the Untapped. Please follow me on there. If you want to see more Nordic beer reviews, do subscribe to the channel. And as always, to my Danish viewers, please let me know some other Danish beers and breweries you'd like me to have a look at. And I will apologize in advance for any bad Danish pronunciations. I'm still learning Swedish and Danish is just a little bit harder than that so hopefully it will come in time. But anyway, to tell you about Rocket Brewing Company. So Rocket Brewing Company are based in the Vesterport area of Copenhagen and as I said before they're a specialist Britannomyces brewery meaning they specialise in sour beers and sour wheat ales and things like that. Really quite an interesting concept actually. So the company was founded in 2014 by five people and the three full-time partners are Kim Agastern and Thomas Schoen, they're the brewers, and there's also Ulrich Lerskov Schmidt, who deals with the admin side of things, and they're joined by two other partners, who are Martin Mostrom, who deals with the design, and Martin Hoyle, who deals with the concepts, and together they both deal with the sort of breweries marketing and the social media side of things as well. But unlike many other Copenhagen brewers, you may have heard of obviously Toyol and McKellar and things, there's a big gypsy brewing culture in Copenhagen, but these guys actually have their own brewery, and this is located in the small town of Haslev, which is a little bit to the south of Copenhagen, about 40 minutes or so I believe. But the brewery is in an old abattoir, it's got a floor space of about 250 square metres and there they have their 500 litre brewing system and they say that this is basically the world's biggest home brewery and it's quite unusual actually for a, a craft beer company who are pretty well known in fact, especially in Denmark, for, it's quite unusual for them to brew their beer in such small batches. Usually 500 litres is a sort of pilot batch if you like, so for them to brew on that scale is quite surprising. But as of May 2015 they also had a fermentation capacity of 13,000 litres so there is a fair bit of output from this brewery and they say that they can do two brews in a long day so you will see a lot of interesting things coming out of this brewery and they do have quite an extensive range of beers so just to list a few of these for you the regular ones include Club Tropicana, First Contact, Monks on Mars, Morpheus, Sign of Life, Total Eclipse and Zero Gravity and of course these guys all have Brett added to them so they are kind of unusual variants of sour beers so yeah that's your little bit about Rocket Brewing Company so let's actually get on to the tasting of this beer now so as I told you at the start this one is Deja Vu it's a black farmhouse ale on the website actually they didn't have a list of all the hops and malts and things that they've put in this beer so unfortunately I can't really tell you about that it just says it's got water malts oats wheat brown sugar hops and Britannomyces uh, and that's in Danish as well. It doesn't tell you anything about that. On the back it says, Captain's Log. In space everything looks the same and everything is different. Blackness is all around us and yet this place has a black spot in my mind. We've been here before. There's something familiar about it. Like a recurring dream, the same one every time but never the same. Universe, excitement, something new and yet familiar. Deja vu. So yeah, that's quite interesting actually. I quite like the little blurbs like that. But you can see on the side here it says, Pure Brett. You can see the nice kind of rocket artwork. All the rocket artwork is kind of fairly similar. It's all in this same style and as I said they've got somebody at the brewery who specialises in that sort of thing. Plain bottle cap and on the back there you can see Rocket Brewing Company's little logo. So really nice. It would be cool to see that on the bottle cap actually but I'm sure that's something that will come with time. So let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting. This one comes in at 7.2 percent and of course it's a black farmhouse ale. You can see Nice smoky opening there as we get it out. And I think I'll need to be careful with this one. There's quite a bit 
of carbonation I think going to come out of this beer. We'll just pour it carefully. It's always a bit of a pain for beer reviews if the head on the beer can go, goes a little bit too crazy. You want a little bit of head but not to be overwhelmed by it. So there we are. That's just a nice kind of, that's a nice pour there. That's exactly what you want. So yeah, as you can see, this beer has poured a really nice sort of dark, probably a dark ebony, sort of, yeah, definitely a dark ebony rosewood colour. It's actually a lot of sediment, just a big block of sediment there has come out in the bottom of this beer. So we'll just, we'll try it a little bit without that. We'll try and avoid drinking that to start off with, then we'll try and drink a bit of the sediment. But as you can see, a nice dark ebony rosewood colour, a full finger of a frothy kind of beige tan head. If I put the light through this beer, there's a little bit of a ruby edge to it, but it's kind of like a, a sort of Coca-Cola colour, actually. Ebony rose was probably a good way to describe that. There is a good bit of sediment in it. You can see that in the glass there with the camera. But yeah, there's a few big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, but quite a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there. I should maybe have been a bit more careful with the pour there and just try to avoid putting in the last little bit of it. But couldn't actually see the sediment coming out, but it doesn't really matter, not much we can do about it now. So let's have a smell of this one. So This is quite interesting actually. It's got a nice kind of sweet malty character to it, this beer. Quite a toasted malt base, as you would expect, but it's not kind of ashy or anything. It's more of a sweet kind of toasted malt base. There's a good bit of kind of milk chocolate coming out of this one, a bit of toasted caramel, but on the sweeter side of things, but there's a big bready malt and yeasty character in there. There's a good sort of brown, slightly rye bread kind of sweet character in there. And if you sugar the beer up, you start to get a few of the other things coming out. The aroma on this one actually reminds me a bit of a sort of English mild beer. There is a bit of a red fruity ester coming out of this one. And as I say, you've got the big brown bready notes. You can get just a little bit of the bread. You have to sugar the beer up a bit to get those kind of sort of tart, citrusy, very sharp citrusy aromas, very kind of sherbetty aromas. But you can pick that up in this beer when you sugar it up. But for me, the aroma focuses more definitely focuses more on the darker side of things. There's a toasted malt in there, some sweet chocolate and caramel, but a good big bready and yeasty character. And of course, that's what you expect from a farmhouse ale. And like I say, sugar it up a bit, you'll get some of the very sharp, kind of tart, citrusy bread characters coming out there. And I think there is a bit of a kind of grassy hop in there. And that's of course something that you expect of a regular sort of Saison farmhouse ale. So. Yeah, without further ado then, let's get stuck into this beer. As I always say, it's always worth having a look at the aroma before you actually try the beer. It gives you a good idea of what will go on, but let's crack into this one now. My very first black, black farmhouse ale, so should be quite interesting. So go and check out Rocket Brewing Company in Copenhagen. We'll see how we get on here. Score. Now that's quite interesting. First taste, the bread is there. You can pick it up and it comes in with a good bit of sharpness, but then the malt, the big roasted malt base just punches it out of the way and spreads out across the tongue. It just, it's almost like around the edges of the tongue, you get this sharpness from the bread, ca from the bread character and then the malt base just says, nope, boof, comes out. That's exactly what this beer does. Yeah, I can see what Morton meant, like in Old Boutique, and Morton told me that this beer was something that he just thought shouldn't work. And you know what, it does, it really does work. It's, it's a really interesting beer this, and it really does test your palate, because it's, it's flavours that normally would not go together, and somehow it just, it just works. So, you know, kudos to Rocket Beer Company for that. That's pretty damn awesome I have to admit. You always, I always like things. As a beer reviewer I always enjoy things that will test your palate and make you think about the beer a bit more. And you know they've certainly done that. Yeah, this is nice. The other thing about it that you'll notice is that it is very light and very drinkable. So now that my palate's adjusted let's actually dissect the flavour in this a little bit more. 
as I always say, you should sugar the beer around your palate a little bit and just let it all adjust before you, you start picking out all the different individual flavours. Mm. So yeah, as you would expect when you've got a farmhouse ale, with this one, there is a big bready malt base. That just blankets the middle of your tongue. Because there's a bit of a, a kind of roasted malt character to this, you can feel it's almost as if you have a, a very light, it's almost like a pale malt character. That blankets the middle of the tongue and there's that roasted character that just lingers under there. And you get a bit of dryness from the roasted elements of the flavour, just more towards the back edges of your tongue. Not quite in the back corners, but just as you move towards the back and then out a bit, that's where you're getting a kind of lingering, toasted character in this beer. But as you move further forward on the palate, there's a sort of sweet, the sweet chocolate just builds on top of the bread and yeasty character. The yeastiness builds up as you move a bit further forward in the palate from the back. There's some sweet chocolate in there. There's a kind of darker roasted caramel and there's almost a sort of slightly woody or nutty flavour in this one. There is That comes out a bit more in the aftertaste. You do get a sort of slightly woody character that just comes out more towards the front of the tongue in the aftertaste. Not right on the front edge, but just a little bit towards the front of the malt part of your palate. Really an interesting little characteristic to this one. There is a bit of a, a kind of spiciness to the wood as well, which is quite interesting. Yeah. So as you move out towards the side of your palate, there is, in the back corners, there's this very, very smooth, earthy character. It's very smooth, not a lot of dryness coming out there at all. As you move further forward, you do get just a little bit of, of dryness on the front corners of the palate, and there's a bit of grassiness around the front curve of the tongue there. Again, that's very smooth, though. The hops don't come out all that much in this beer, I think. It's all about the, the malt base, this one, which is what you would expect. And there's a good bit of the bretty character as well, which is quite interesting. There's a good bit of dry character builds in the aftertaste too. Yeah. But it's interesting, this beer. It really does work. There's not... When you get a bret beer or a sour beer, you expect it to be really tart and really, really dry. But this beer isn't that. The, the, the bret characters, they're definitely there and you can pick them up, but they blend really well together with the roasted malts in this one. So it is, like Morton said, this is one that is really quite different from anything I've come across before, and I do like it. I wouldn't hesitate to drink this beer again. I'd love to try it on tap and just see what difference that makes to it, but, you know, thumbs up to Rocket Brewing Company. This is a really good beer, and it is quite an interesting one as well. So yeah, but um, as you go behind the front curve of the tongue, you get some fruity characters in there. There's maybe a very very light red fruity ester, just a sort of, you know, I always describe this as being a kind of candied Haribo flavour, but that's very, very light. The bread character, as I say, comes in at the start of the palate and fades. I wasn't expecting that from this, but that fades out and you don't have much of a kind of sharp, tart, lemony, sherbet sort of citrus character from this one. The bread kind of goes away at the start and overall in the front of the palate, it's more of a smooth, slightly grassy hop there and just a little bit of that red fruity ester, but that's a very, very subtle flavour. So as you can tell by the length of time it's taken me to describe what's going on in this beer, this one is quite complex and it is different from other things that I've come across before. So if you want something that will test your palate, then give it a go. In terms of recommending this beer, if, if you like an English mild, I can see you enjoying this beer because of the way the malt base comes out. If you like, perhaps, um, a sort of, maybe a smoked porter, is another good way to do it, but if you like it more focused on the bready side of things, then I could see you enjoying this beer too. But the most important, the, mo the main point of this is that this is something very, very different. If you like sour beers and you like black IPAs, perhaps this is another sort of thing that you could enjoy as well. But yeah, I mean, the main point of the video is this is a good beer and I've enjoyed my first, my first visit to Rocket Brewing Company, if you like. So in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, just to give you a brief thing on that, I would say it's mid-bodied. Carbonation is really quite smooth. It does have a little bit of a prickle when the bread characters come out at the start of the beer. A little bit oily. Some sweetness to the malts too, but there is a good underlying roasted character that has a bit of dryness to it. But there's not really much of a tart flavour. As I said, that fades away very quickly. And there is just a little bit of dryness 
from the Hawks too, but again, that's very minimal. Some grassy flavours at the front and a very smooth, earthy character on the sides of the tongue. So, I mean, overall, this is a really quite nice beer, I have to admit. As I said, it will test your palate, and I can see why Morton says what he did about it. Really, really good beer. So, if you like English Milds, if you like black IPAs, and you want something that will test your palate a bit, then give this guy a go. You know, really good brewery, very highly rated in Danish craft beer circles, and they will test your palate. What more could you want? So, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. As always, please let me know your own thoughts on this beer if you do happen to have tried it. Cool to visit another brewery from Denmark, especially one who are kind of up and coming and really quite highly rated. So do let me know your own thoughts on them and this beer overall. But I thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next one, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Go and check out the social media things. Go and check out Old Boutique in Copenhagen. But most importantly, go and check out Rocket Brewing Company and try a few of their different beers. If you like sour beers, you will enjoy the, their beer so don't be scared to go and check them out. Until the next beer review, it's landed just now and there's a good few Danish ones coming up. Skål!